Hello, everybody. It's John here from GP365. Thank you for joining us. Uh, very excited for today's session. We actually have uh, some guest speakers today from Macorma. So, hey, uh, Angel and, and Karen, I know you're going to be mostly on mute, but uh, I've outed you as well. Thanks for joining. Thank you. So awesome to see so many familiar names as well. Very, very cool. Um, so what I'm going to do here, just while we give everybody an extra minute or two to join up, is I'm going to post a poll uh, that is related to something. And I'm going to tell you more so in just a minute. So you guys should be seeing a poll up on your screen here any second. So if you could, and you know which version of GP you're on, please let me know. Oh, this is good. I'm seeing a lot of... Uh, GP 2018, 2016, leading the pack. Okay, this is good. So the reason I ask, and if you know this, I'm not trying to be that annoying, nagging voice, but uh, GP 2015 is unsupported um, as of, I believe it's March, April. Just think about this, January, March. Yeah, so I think it's April 14th or something, uh, right around there. So if you are on 2015 or older, I see some of you are in 2013, you guys should really, really think about upgrading um, or considering GP365, of course. But if you want to stay on premise, at least get to a supported version um, so that you don't have to worry about um, you know being on an unsupported platform, which is a whole bunch of uh, scary consequences associated with it, which we're not going to talk about today but I just wanted to be that voice reminding everybody. So with that, um, I'm gonna close off the polls. And we'll get started. So again, thank you everybody for uh, joining up. I really appreciate a piece of your Thursday. It has been a little while since we've done these sessions because we were in the holiday uh, period there and I think a lot of people were probably drinking rum and eggnog and not wanting to think about GP so we decided to pause the sessions it's great to uh, see some familiar names and uh, things like that back on the session so we are going to start them up regularly again a few housekeeping items just before we get started again we can't hear you guys so if you have a question you should see a question box somewhere maybe the bottom right of your screen please put the question in. Um, we'll come to it at the end. If it's impacting sort of your ability to understand the next steps and the flow, um, I'll try and look for it during the demo and we'll sort of get to it as soon as we can. But otherwise we will come to them at the end. And uh, yeah, today's a, a pretty exciting topic for us. We have uh, a guest speaker. So you're not just gonna have to listen to my corny jokes. We have uh, Angel from McCorma today. Hey, Angel. Hi. Thank you so much for joining. So maybe as a quick introduction here, just uh, before we get started into the actual product demo. So most of you are very used to my voice and you guys know what we do, but I do see around 10 or so uh, new names uh, on today's session. So just very quickly, um, obviously my name is John from GP365. What we do is provide a software as a service experience for GP. So if you're currently using GP and you don't want to have to worry about upgrades or having it on premise or servers or technical issues, uh, we can take all of those pains away. And uh, we also provide a free migration to GP365 and upgrade you to the latest version for free. So uh, my sales pitch is over, but if you would like to see a more in-depth sales pitch of what we do or you'd like to talk to us about um, some help on the service side or some uh, other issues, that's my email uh, right on the screen. So please let me know and uh, I'll be happy to help you. So today we have, you know, not to do your introduction for you, Angel, but we have one of the largest and most popular uh, ISV uh, creators for Dynamics GP. They're very, very well known. They make some fantastic products. A lot of our customers use them. I'm very excited to talk about uh, their payment product today. So with that, maybe I'll toss it over to you, Angel, to do a bit of an introduction uh, about yourself and also maybe McCorma. All right, thank you. Yeah, um, I'm Angel Bloom. I've been with McCorma now for 13 years, and McCorma itself has been in business for over 20 years. Um, we started out as the 
check printing company that most of you all know us as for McCorma Micker, which is just getting that Micker line on your checks. And then we have added the automated signatures and, and enhanced from there. And now we've really become this full automation process for your AP payments. And that's what I'm going to be uh, talking to you today about. That's awesome. Yeah, so um, you know, maybe just uh, a couple last things. So the agenda for today is we're going to obviously focus on the payables product. Um, so we're, we're going to have a look uh, maybe at sort of a high level introduction about what it can do and talk a little bit about the roadmap of the product. And then we'll actually dive into a real demo and we'll end off today with some pricing. Um, so McCorma has been gracious enough to provide uh, a discount on the product for everybody who joins today's session. So if you like it and you like what you see, um, you're going to be able to get it for uh, a really good price. So uh, thank you again for that. And maybe what I'll do is um, I'll kick it off to the next slide and okay. uh, yeah, let you work your magic and you just give me the awkward uh, next slide cue and I'll uh, make sure I do, I do so. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. Well, thanks everybody for joining today. Um, I kind of already went over this, but originally 20 years ago, we were the Micker Check Printing Company, fully integrated into Dynamics GP. And now we've evol evolved that product into what we now call the Payment Hub, which is an, a way to automate your payment process from your payment batch creation all the way through to if you have EFT and safe pay files, we can generate those for you. So then they're ready for you to send off to the bank. So that's kind of what I'm going to be showing you today. Um, if you could go to the next slide. So the Payment Hub has a lot to offer within it. So I will be showing you the action board because that's really the heart of what we um, do now by automating batch creation, processing everything, especially if you are someone who has a lot of batches that you're creating, even in one company, but if you have different batches in different GP companies, this can really save you a lot of time there. So having one centralized place to handle all of this from is one of the big things that we're doing now. Um, our task-based security gives you a workflow on your payment batches. Um, you can drill down into them to to approve those payments before they get cut, or you can just authorize a batch if you're wanting that, just a simple level of approval with Signature Logic. Um, we ha still have our basic MICR check printing abilities, so you'll be setting up each one of your checkbooks with a check format, um, adding that automated Signature Logic if you would like. Um, since the whole process is completely integrated, we can add audit logs for you. So you can see who's processing your payments, who's approving them. The check image archiving gives you a little bit of an ability to see those payments, um, actually copies of your checks inside of Dynamics GP, as well as save a PDF copy outside. Um, so I'll show you that as well. And then one feature that we've had around for a long time is the assigned by checkbook ID. Some companies out there have multiple checkbooks in one company and they need to be really specific about where their vendors or vouchers are being paid by that checkbook. And we can help ensure that they're paid properly. Something new that we're going to be releasing in our next build is approvals outside of GP. So if you are currently somebody using McCorma or interested in, in McCorma and you're wanting an approval process on your payments that you can do right from your phone, we will have that available as an add-on product here in just another month or so with our release of Build 80. Okay, next slide. So again, talking about approvals outside of DP, that is coming soon. And it's been something that our clients have been asking for for a really long time. They can still go into GP and handle the approval process, but just having that ability right there on their phone. And it also gives them approvals across companies. So you can access a drop down of all the batches across all of your companies and approve them right there on your phone. Next slide. 
It's going to be exciting. Sorry, just to, yeah. not to interrupt your flow, but I can't, yeah, I can't wait for that. It's going to be amazing. I know. It is very exciting. And I'm excited to offer it because it's been asked for for a really long time. Exactly. Yeah, so, very cool. So if you are someone that already owns Macorma, and I bet you there's some of you out there, um, one of the really exciting things that we just did on January 1, and if you don't already know about it, is we've added that approval workflow. I'm sorry, we've added the action board, what I'm going to be showing you to automate everything, into the Payment Hub. It's not an additional purchase any longer. It's just right there for you. Um, so even if you already have us, um, upgrading to our latest build, making sure you're on our new task-based security, and then, of course, you're using our blank check stock and all of that's sort of probably already done for you, is really all it would take to implement the action board that I'm going to be demonstrating here in just a couple minutes. And I think that's my last slide, is it not? It is, yes. Yeah, so I'm going to make you presenter and uh, okay. everybody put your hats on. You're going to go for a wild ride here with some uh, payables automation. How about that for an introduction? It's tough to follow. That's right? awesome. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you should uh, get the request any second. There you go. Okay. I can see. You can? Which can screen see. is it showing? Uh, is it showing GP? It's showing your webcam. No, I'm kidding. Um, it's showing, <laughs> uh, It's showing. yeah, it's showing an R RDS window um, with GP. Uh, Ryan Rose's home. Oh, great. Okay, it did open up on the right window. That's perfect. Okay. All right. Well, yeah, I'm in GP here. And um, like I, I think I mentioned earlier, McCormick is completely integrated into Dynamics GP. So if you're already using us or you start using us, once the implementation is done, you're using Dynamics GP screens to go and print your payments, uh, your checks, and process them through. And, and really, it doesn't feel like any different than what you're doing with normal GP functionality. We just give you all that security, signature logic, and everything else. But we wanted to do more. We had um, clients coming to us saying, how can, we, how can you make the payment process easier? And so we've been working on this for several years to come up with the action board. And what this does is um, for all of your batches, or maybe just even just some of your batches, if you have criteria that you're using every single week or on a regular basis to create payment batches, we can save that criteria for you. Um, we can even add logic for making sure that you're capturing discount dates and due dates properly. By saving that criteria and having it in a process that you can always rely on, you're not going to be running into the kind of manual mistakes that can happen when you have to go in each week and do that yourself. So you can go to select checks and do some automation, of course, by you know pulling in the same criteria every week. But imagine not even having to do that. It's saved for you. It's ready to go. And you can just select a process and have your batches created. So that's the first step that the action board can offer you is that building of your payment batches. And when you set up a process, you're assigning all this information. You're telling it, here's my build criteria, so what I would normally put into select checks to get all my utility payments into one batch. And then we can go across companies for you so as you can see here, I've got a utility batch that's going to be running in all three of the companies I have set up. And then I've assigned a checkbook, which um, they can be different checkbooks for each company or the same one. Um, in my case, I have the first bank checkbook in all of my companies, and I've selected that there, but they could be different. And then I'm also telling it what kind of batch to create. So um, in some cases, I have EFTs going and others checks and then also assigning that uh, currency. When I'm in a process, and I can create as many processes as needed, I can select which build IDs that I want it to run, or as seen here, all of them are selected. So it's as easy as that to get started on building payments batches. As this runs, 
Um, it is going to flash the windows for you. I do that in my demos just because I think it's fun. That can certainly be turned off. This is not a macro, so um, I can step away from this, be working in Outlook or um, Excel to do something else while this is going. The process box that's in the corner that just went away because it's switching to a new company for me, um, we'll come back up in just a second. That kind of keeps track of everything that's happening. And if for some reason I did need to work in my GP system, I could pause the process, do what I need to do, and then start it back up. Anybody else, it's only the person that's logged in running this process that wouldn't be able to work in GP until it's done. But you do have that ability to pause. So it's going through each one of my companies. It's opening your GP screens just like you would have to normally, and it's creating those payment batches for me. And then it's going to come back to the original company I was logged in to, and it's gonna give me a report. Now, I could have started this from any one of my three companies. There's no restrictions there. So if one day I happen to be ready to start this process in my Fabricam company, it's gonna run just the same. It of course follows all the GP rules and restrictions. So if Ryan didn't have access to one of those companies, um, it wouldn't be creating batches there for him. So it just, it should take a second or two more for it to come back to my main company. And then I'll be able to show you the report. Another key thing to remember about this is there's no restrictions. So these batches that I'm creating right now, um, I would be able to edit them in edit check batch uh, if needed, um, look at them, add things to them, just like I would any other batch that I manually created. So it is coming back to my complete solutions company where I began. And we're going to get that report. Always seems to take longer than you think. Okay, here we go. This is where I need one of my really corny uh, accounting jokes, but uh, I'll spare I'll spare, <laughs> spare everybody from uh, that pain. <laughs> oh, thank you. Okay, so it went across my three companies and built about four batches, four to five batches in each, um, and it's giving you each section so you can see Fabricam, Complete Solutions. Um, balanced business. It's telling me how many transactions it pulled in and the dollar amount, as well as how long that took. So this report normally, I mean, this run normally takes about two minutes, give or take the day. So you might have a bigger run or a smaller run, but you're always going to know on average how much time you have um, while this is, is doing all those button clicks for you. So the next step in the process would be to get those batches printing or those EFT remittances sent out. And we can do it all from one screen. So moving to the next process, you can see all of your batches. Now you see we've got some triangles going on here. That's because I have secure approval workflow turned on in my Complete Solutions company. So if I click on here, what it's gonna tell me is my approval request has already been sent out for me automatically. When I created those batches, it sent the request for someone to approve them, and now I have to wait on that process. So we can skip over here really quick to Debbie, and with the workflow, she's gonna come to the McCormick approval page, and she's gonna see these payments that she just got an email on. And she'll be able to drill in here, look at these payments. So let's take a look at a couple of them. If I drill in here, I can see that for my utility, AT&T, uh, these are the vouchers that are being um, paid to make up this total payment amount. I can drill in uh, to that voucher and look at what's going on specifically with that. If I had DocuSign um, set up, I would be able to, and I've been scanning in my invoices, I could see them from this screen. Um, so I could go to this envelope here. It's not set up for me now, 
but an image um, could be here for me to look at. And once I've reviewed all of these, I can select them all and make an approval for everything I see here. So I am just gonna go ahead and select all the way down. I could also reject. I can reject on the payment level. So let's actually, let me show you that really quick. Because that is interesting to note that the approvers do not have to send all these payments through. So for instance, if AT&T didn't look right to me, I could simply hit reject give a reason and I'll just type in reject here uh, that would go back to the person that created this payment batch and it removed that payment right from this not from the system but from that particular payment batch so that um, it's not going to be paid right now your AP clerk's got a reason for why and what they need to do they can handle those vouchers fixing them however they need to and then putting them back into a payment batch and then the rest of them are ready to go. So we will hit approve. All right. So we'll go back over here as Ryan, back to the action board and do a refresh. Cause we're gonna see some of those arrows go, those triangles go away. All but one, and that one, by the way, I uh, see this A2 appendage. That's because this um, payment batch actually needs two approvers. So Debbie gave her approval, but it's still waiting for that secondary approval. And that just all depends on what kind of threshold levels you'd like to have. Um, we've got a wide variety of options there where how you want your signatures to be applied, how many approvers you want to be involved in the process, um, all of that logic is capability of us in here in McCorma. So I've highlighted all of these now, and we can just hit process again, and I can walk away. It's going to go through. It is sending. Uh, for my EFTs, it's actually doing a lot more than even for the checks, because we can automate that all the way through with this one button click. So for my EFTs, it is actually going to send the remittances, post, and generate those EFT files. So all of the EFTs that are being processed right now are essentially done, except for sending those files off to the bank. And then for my check batches, we'll see the next step, which is posting. We do not automatically post any check batches because of course there's always that chance that something could have gone wrong on the printer. Uh, there might be a paper jam or whatever it might be. And you want to ensure that you've gotten those printed off properly before you go posting those particular batches. Um, you don't have to automate EFTs all the way through. It's just an option here to do that. Um, and so you could be posting your EFT batches if that's what you would prefer to do. Again, you can pause this process. The only time that um, that little box in the corner goes away is when it's switching companies, which it's doing right now. And it's gonna give me a report just like it did before to let me know all of the batches that it took care of and um, how much time that took. I didn't take the time to point this out before, but um, there were batches in there that had not been created by the action board. So you can still go to select checks or edit check batch and create batches that way. And they will show up in the processing screen. So actually, as you're seeing this right now, you kind of can see a couple batches there at the end that are named test batch. Those were all manually created um, in select checks and they're still being processed right here through the action board. That's why I say batch creation can be something that creates all of your batches or just certain ones that you feel you can automate or would like to automate. So this is probably gonna take just a couple more minutes. I think it is now in my Fabricam company. I don't, I don't know if you wanna take a, a quick question just while that processes. Yes, yeah, love to. Yeah, so we have one question here uh, from Mr. Sharifi, and the question is, uh, is the mobile approval available for 2018 GP as well? Definitely. 
Yes. So right. um, the build of X80, which is our next build coming out, will probably be released to the public in February. Uh, we are right nearing the end of our te internal testing process. So uh, when X80 is released, that's when um, we'll have it available. And it will be available actually for 2015, 16, and 18. Okay. Awesome. So, sure. So here's the report. Again, going across my three companies telling me what batches were processed, how much was processed, and how long it took. Just a smidge more than it took to actually create those batches. And I was processing a lot more uh, than I'd actually created. All right. So as mentioned, the next step would be posting for any of those check batches that I have out there. And there were four of them. I'm not gonna go through this process. I think you guys get the idea of what's gonna happen if I select them all and hit process. It's just gonna post for me and bring me back a report at the end. I talked about the fact that you can automate EFTs all the way through, but if you have a separation of duties and you do not want the person who is creating and processing your payments to actually generate EFT files, you can separate that out um, not automate it by, um, there's some options under here that I didn't actually show you, but this is where I'm telling it to request approval when it creates batches, and this are the options for automating EFTs and state pay files. So one thing I didn't mention before is if you are doing safe pay on posting, you can have those safe pay files generated for you as well. And so we can automate it through, or we've given you your own screens for the separation of duty. There's nothing here in EFT, of course, because I automated it, but it would look similar to the Jeep, this generate safe pay screen, where you'd be able to choose um, what batches or what checkbooks you need to generate safe pay files for. I don't have any, there's no numbers over here. If I hadn't automated that and there were safe pay files to be created, we would see dollar amounts over here. I could select them and then hit process all at once and it would create all those files. The path is what you choose to where it saves those files for you, just like you've set up a path right now in Dynamics GP. So that's it, that is how we automate all the way through. Now, I don't know if anybody else has any questions or I can answer and show you a little bit more about how we set up build IDs and save that criteria and then how process IDs are created. Were there any other questions at this point? Yeah, let me just have a peek here. I don't see any. Um, does anybody have an area that maybe you'd like Angel to dig into a bit more or any you know, specific topics that might be of interest to, to anybody here? I don't see any so far. Okay. All right. Well, um, just to talk a little bit more about setting up the automation process, this is our... Um, build ID screen where we're saving criteria. And it looks very similar um, to what is now called build payments or select checks in the older versions. Um, but we're just saving this so that we can utilize it across companies and every single week or however often you wanna create a utility batch or whatever kind. So your selection criteria here, you see those options are exactly the same as what you have in select checks, except we are also offering you um, logical fields for um, pulling in by a due date or a discount date, which is really, um, a can really be a benefit to you because you don't have to calculate that date anymore. You can tell it whether you want to base it off of a user date or end of the month, and then you can choose how many days you want it to look at by calendar or business day. So let's say you want to capture discounts 
you want to set that up so that every time you run this particular build ID, that it um, looks out seven days in advance for any discounts or 30 days in advance, whatever would be logical. You set that up and you never have to worry about um, what that date range is. It will always know. It looks at when you're running the process and then when that, um, where your offset date is every single time. And then you create a process. And again, there's no limit on build IDs that you need to set up or process IDs. But a process ID, again, would allow you to take all those build IDs across your different companies if needed, um, apply different checkbooks and the way you want those batches created if they're EFT and check. So if I wanted to add something here to this, I would just select the company I want to add it for, select the checkbook so I could do an Uptown Trust. And then if I had other build IDs, I don't have anyone different, but I'll just select one that I have here and then telling it the criteria and if I wanted to create checks and inserting that, just like that. And so you can have as many as these if you need. You can, you can have one for your different account payable clerks if you have one doing different tasks in different companies or um, just general like I have like end of the week, however you, however you process. Awesome. I have another question for you too. I don't know if uh, great. That's a good time. Yeah. So the question is uh, from Larry. Uh, hey, Larry. Uh, does this work with multi-entity management? Yes, Larry. It does. So we have done and some work with multi-entity management. We have a mem connector that actually gives you the ability to put. Um, entity information on your checksum, but with the action board, we're also giving you the ability to build batches. So um, I don't have multi-entity management set up in my test environment, so I can't really show you, but when it comes to creating your process IDs, if you have multi-entity management um, installed, you would get an additional button up here, or you could choose if you're creating batches in a centralized or decentralized environment, and it would give you the ability that you need to work with the MEM uh, functionality to create your batches. So yes, we are fully integrated. Awesome, and the next yeah, question, right. I can maybe answer the first part and I'll throw it over to you for the second, which is, does this work with any version of GP or just 365? So it does, of course, work with our solution, uh, GP365, and of course, with GP365, you're always on the latest version. So uh, right now, uh, it's either GP2018 R2 or GP Next. But in terms of the versions this product works with, um, maybe you can talk about that, Angel. Okay. So um, we introduced the Action Board into our system in 2013. So technically, if you were on 2013, um, that is available for you but we like we've been in business for 20 years we have builds going back although we have implemented something similar to what uh g or yeah dynamics microsoft has done and um 2013 is no longer a supported build but um it is available to you to download um and utilize all of this functionality awesome and I think that's it for questions, I think. Okay. I think we're good. Um, did you have anything else that you wanted to show Angel or should I uh, take everybody through pricing? Yeah, um, if nobody else has any questions, I mean, always just keep in mind that the functionality of maker check printing, automated signatures, threshold and workflow logic is all built into this system. Um, there's, there would be a lot more I could show you if I was diving into all those things, but um, I, don't, I don't know that that's necessarily um, something anybody wants to see today, but we could certainly show another time. So we can just go ahead with pricing, I think. Okay, cool. Yeah, and something I'm going to do at the end, uh, just before we let everybody go, is I'm going to put up a poll for anyone who, uh, if you liked what you uh, saw today and you'd like to maybe find out more about specifically how it can help, you know, your operation or your install of GP, 
um, there's going to be a question that if you just basically select yes, I'm interested, uh, we'll reach out to you with the McCormick team and uh, set up a time to talk about kind of your requirements one on one and make sure that we answer um, everything specific to you before you make the uh, product purchase. So hang tight for that. Um, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to steal back presenter. So just bear with me. Okay. And we will finish off here with some pricing. Okay. Okay. So, um, as with most things GP, uh, third party related, anyhow, um, there is a cost for the product and then there's a cost for some configuration and setup. So, in terms of the software cost, um, the typical cost is $4,500. Um, with the first year of annual uh, enhancement plan. And McCorma has graciously offered a 15% discount for anyone on this session. So if you'd like to buy it and you purchase before March, uh, you'll, you're, you're going to save whatever it is, $562.50. So yay, thumbs up. So this is something you do want to purchase. Definitely you know, take use of that promo and, and get it for that price. In terms of the configuration and training, um, you know, that sort of depends on how much of the product you want to use and kind of what your specific requirements are. But generally, uh, an implementation and training will start at around $1,500 and go up from there. But again, when we sort of talk to you about your specific requirements, we'd be able to give you sort of an exact price so you know, you know what to get budget for um, before you make the purchase. So um, if this is something you want to purchase, let us know. We'll contact you, dig into your requirements, come up with exactly what you need to do and ultimately a price for it and uh, get the product purchased. Very cool. And the last slide is number one, thank you uh, for everybody who joined. Uh, we also have a very exciting boot camp coming up on February 7th, which is, oh my gosh, it's only a few weeks away now, but uh, that's going to be really exciting. It's either at our Toronto office. So if you're looking for an excuse to come and see Toronto or you're here and uh, you know you, you can come to our office, please do. If you'd prefer to attend online, that's no problem as well. There is a full agenda, which um, I can send anyone who's interested. The cost is $800 uh, Canadian or $400 if you're a GP365 customer. And uh, it's an all day session where we're doing a very deep dive into Management Reporter. It'll be two consultants, one performing the training and one who will be walking around to help with sort of specific questions and anything that you know, may be specific to your business. Um, we're going to keep the sessions pretty intimate. Um, actually, one of our sessions right now is, is full, so we're going to start another one to keep it small so we can make sure we get to um, everybody's questions. So if you're interested and you're using Management Reporter and or maybe you'd like to use Management Reporter more, this is the session for you. And uh, yeah, you're going to get a lot of value out of it. So email me. There's my email. Um, and uh, yeah, we look forward to seeing everybody on the next session. We also are going to be doing a session in February on Jet Reports. So you'll see that on our website pretty soon. And we're going to be sending a newsletter out in no time flat so really appreciate everybody joining especially you angel you were awesome thank you so much for your help and thank you uh, yeah so we'll talk to everybody very soon thanks for joining have a good thursday and uh yeah we'll talk to everybody very soon